G'day legends. In this video, we're going to take a look at all things bass guitar. So I'm going to show you how I go about editing bass using flex time to get the drums and bass really nice and tight together. Tight, 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 yeah! As well as the processing that I've used to try and achieve a nice Ampeg style bass tone on this finger play performance. So we're going to get a little bit of the mid scooped out, a little bit of click on top, get that kind of smiley face bass sound, make some room for the guitars. So let's have a look at the way I would go about using flex time on bass to make it really tight the drums. So basically you want to just highlight your channel that you're working on. So we've got our bass track here. If you can't see the flex symbol, which is this one over here, press command F. That's going to show up the options here. And then we're going to select monophonic. So from my experience, monophonic works pretty well, unless there's a lot of like bass chords and stuff going on, then this may become problematic. If it's a pretty standard bass track without multiple notes being played at once, monophonic is the go-to. Okay, so if that hasn't done anything, hit the little flex symbol. There we go. Okay, so what you wanna do is double click on your file so it opens up the audio editor. And then make sure you're on the file tab in the middle here. And then come over and make sure that this is selected. So click on that if it's not orange. And then what that's gonna do is show us our markers on the base. So we should come across, we can see all of these flex markers here. Now we can see there's some ones here that are like kind of problematic. For the most part, it's pretty good. If you feel like there's sort of extra flex markers that aren't right, then hit the minus symbol, and it's gonna start taking markers away. If you feel like there's not enough, press the plus until you feel like it's covering a majority of the notes, putting markers in. But once you go too far, you'll start to see it adds sort of problematic markers that you don't want. So that's when you might take it back a little bit. And even if it misses some notes, it's not really a big problem. It's probably better to do that than have a lot of messy markers in there. So you can see this one here, like that's annoying. So, so that's gone and I think we're kind of pretty good now. You never get that perfect usually, like you have to come to some kind of compromise. Now, whenever you have to edit something like this, it always takes a little bit of time. Flex time speed things up a little bit for us, but you still have to sacrifice a little bit of time to do it properly. Now what we want to do is make sure that our secondary tool is on the pencil so that when we hold command in, the pencil shows up and we can click and add a marker. So this is going to let us recover some of those lost markers. And if you still have ones that are like this, where it's just in the middle of nowhere, that's going to cause problems, just double click on it and it's going to disappear. So that is the way that I would go through editing the bass. Now it's a little tedious, but you just work your way through getting rid of any problematic markers and then adding markers when necessary. So let's just leave that like that for now and let's snap this to the grid. So we're gonna press I, which is gonna open up the inspector. Make sure we're still selecting that base audio file. Come up to quantize. If you can't see that, click on this little arrow. So this pop down menu appears and then we're gonna quantize. And for this track, it's all eighth notes. So you can have a look, you can see the value of the notes here against the grid. We're in 16th notes. So there's pretty much one note for every two beats and there's nothing really syncopated happening. It's a very sort of like eighth note driven song. So I'm going to just snap this to eighth notes because it's going to create the less amount of problems for me. If I snap it to 16th notes when there's no actual 16th notes in the track, it may move them to the wrong marker, which creates more work for me that I have to drag them back to the right place. So you just always want to try and make this as easy for yourself as possible. If you have a lot of 16th notes, don't snap it to eighth notes, snap it to 16th notes. If you have a lot of 30 second notes, snap it to 30 second notes. Whatever's going to get you the best results, choose that note value. So click eighth notes and it snapped it too. Now, if you didn't want to go 100%, you could come down to Q strength and you could write in, I don't know, 80%. And so you can see it shifted a little bit. It's not totally perfect. And we might do that actually. Kind of just still leave a little bit of movement in the base, but it's going to be a little bit tighter now. Once you've got all your markers kind of set, give it a listen through. If you hear anything problematic in the global window, just make sure you have your secondary tool as set as the eraser and then hold down command and you can remove any markers that look problematic. And then you can also click and drag and fix anything that doesn't look quite right too. So it's a bit of a balance between setting your markers in the audio editor and then also listening through and doing any little edits in the global window that needs sort of dragging over or just removing flex markers that are just causing problems. Okay, so you can hear it. that's pretty tight. Now we turn flex off. You know, it's not bad. It's still, sometimes it's a little behind the beat. And we zoom in, we can kind of see it sort of goes off the beat slightly. Like it's not bad at all, but if we're going for that really tight bass sound, you can see here we move off the beat a little bit. If we're going for that really tight bass sound, snapping at that little bit extra to the grid, 
it's just making it really locking with the drums because I've already flexed some of the drums and now flexing the bass in with it just makes it sound like a really tight unit. And then once the guitars come in a little bit later, it sounds really good. <laughs> So once you finish doing that, say your bass track's all tidied up, what you could do is then bounce this in place so you commit to those flex edits and then you could hide the original bass track and keep it there as a backup. So let's do that. So I'm going to open up the mixer, turn off all our processing on the bass track and then we click on that, make sure it's highlighted, press Control B and then we can name this bass guitar flex and then let's make sure that bypass plugins is checked, we've already turned them off anyway and then Include audio tail in file, include audio tail in region, that's fine to have that checked. Overload protection only, that's fine. Let's bounce it. Where did this delay come from? Why did this waves delay pop up? That's super weird. That was a really weird glitch. I've never seen that happen before. Okay, so now we've got our flex time bass track. We can turn flex time off on this because you don't really want it eating up your CPU in the background. So you can turn that off, press H, click on the H and hide that bass track now. So that's that's gone, it's in the background, but if you ever need to come back to it for some reason, you messed up your flex edits, you can go back to it and fix it. So it's always good to kind of keep that stuff hiding in the background. Also, if you want to support this channel, make sure you check out that description link below. There's loads of cool stuff in there. Go check out all the plugin companies that I'm affiliate with. If you use any of those links, a small commission comes back to the channel and that really helps support the time that goes into this, as well as if you do your shopping at Sweetwater Music or your online music gear stuff, using my affiliate link throws a small kickback of commission to the channel. Again, helping with all the time that's spent making these videos. Okay, so this is what the bass sounds like without any processing now. Typical kind of finger bass sound, nice and warm. It's a clear tone, it's good, it doesn't sound messy. So that's a great starting point for us to work with. Now what I wanna do is get that kind of Ampeg scooped out a little bit of a smiley face bass tone. There's a bunch of frequencies that are overlapping and I want to kind of get the bass more focused in that real low end and then have a little bit of that clicky top end of the fingers to help it cut through the mix. So I've actually used Neural DSP's Parallax for this. Now, generally when I load up Parallax, I just like to flick through the presets. There are some really nice presets in here. It gets you a really good starting point and even sometimes you don't have to do anything extra. Like today, I've just flicked through until I came across all our bass have abandoned us. So really bringing that DI sound to life getting that nice low end and that sort of clacky finger sound on top, which I like. It's not dirty either. I don't think we want a really distorted bass tone in this track. It is making the bass clearer and helping it pop a little better. So then following that up with some 1176, just want to level out the performance, basically kind of a medium attack, fast release, four to one ratio, a couple of dBs of gain reduction at any given time. So really smooths out the performance. Love 1176 on bass, especially the Rev E version. And basically I don't want to over compress the bass, but I want the bass to be compressing all the time. So that means on the sort of softest notes, I want the meter kind of just moving. And then on the big notes, kind of that's where it's getting hit the heaviest. And then everything in between is leveling out. Because we want the level of the bass so consistent, we don't really want to have any parts where it sort of drops away or anything like that. That's why we kind of need to always have the needle slightly moving and then really moving. So that's kind of my thought process when I'm compressing bass is just to always have a little bit of gain reduction going at any time. So then I felt like I needed to bring out a little bit of the fingers a little bit more. So we've just got a boost at 1.8K with a wide bell and that's all we're doing on this channel strip. So it's just adding a little bit of clack on top of the bass, which really helps it cut through the mix. When you have that really warm bass sound, it doesn't really help it cut through, especially on like little speakers, and it doesn't really give the bass much tone either. Okay, so the next thing we have is a small cut on a Logic EQ, 
at 91.5 hertz and this is just a minus 1.8 db cut with a medium bell just felt like the bass was getting a little boomy in the mix and just wanted to kind of just pull that fundamental back a touch and I felt like it sort of sat in there better, especially once the big guitars come in, like we got some distorted guitars in the chorus. It felt like everything was sort of getting a little bit in the way of each other there. I feel like that's sitting in the mix a little bit better. And then lastly, I just have a Logic stock compressor. And you've probably seen me use this in some other mixing tutorials, but basically I just have a preset in this. So if I click the arrow over, it jumps straight to my Kick SC, which is sidechain. And I have this set up with a fast attack, fast release, auto gain off. And then all I have to do is come up to sidechain and then just choose the audio file that I want to sidechain to the bass, which is the kick. So it ducks a little bit when the kick hits. And I've got it on the kick sample because it's just a very um, reliable source to have. If the recording has a bit of bleed and extra stuff happening in it, sometimes the side chain's a little bit unreliable on a direct mic to the drum kit. Whereas using the sample, it's just a triggered kick sound and we're only going to get those hits on the kick every time. <laughs> So every time the kick hits, the compressor reacts and it's actually pushing the bass down. So that helps the kick to punch through and then straight away, the rest of the bass note comes back. So we get the punch of the kick and then we get the fullness of the bass again. If you don't know what side chaining is, have a quick listen to this and I'll just really over exaggerate it for you. So you can hear it's Pretty aggressive when you pull that threshold down, just like gets that pumping effect that you hear in dance music. But all we really want in kind of like a rock song like this is anywhere between maybe like one to three dBs of gain reduction. If you go further than that, the bass starts to get a weird sort of pumping effect, which doesn't really suit this style. But there's no rules. If you like that pumping effect, slam it. And that's pretty much it. So let's have a listen to what the bass sounds like without any processing. Pretty big change, just makes the bass feel a little bit more alive and leaves a little bit more room for other elements in the mix. So you can probably turn that bass up a little bit and it's not gonna blow the mix out, whereas before it had a lot of low mids in it and it was making it a little bit muddy, especially if we had the bass a bit louder, it sort of just occupied a lot of space. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Make sure to check out the drum samples and mixing courses on my online store. Doing that is a massive support as well. If you want to see a couple other ways that I like to process bass in my mixes, then check out this next video coming up.